The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the April 11th, the magnificent Monday edition of today's Trader's Edge Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, well, it means we can find a gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that. And that's this. During this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. We'd love to hear from you. If you can't dial in, we've got you covered there, too. You can always send me an email. Send it quick. Send it to steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question in and our tigers. And, well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Magnificent Monday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Let's show right now. I got all the US indices trading to the downside, with the exception being the transports, which are up 74 points. The Dow's off 206, the SP 49, NASDAQ 100, 208, Russell's down 11, semis are off 38, gold's up 30 cents, silver's up 15 pennies, lights recruit back four bucks and change, natural gas up 35 cents, big move to the upside, 30 year treasury up one point and two ticks, trade out at 142.03. Leading the charge dollar wise, the upside, you've got booking holdings, 25 bucks, SVB financial, 16 or three. Percent sale point technologies 14 bucks, 29 percent Burlington stores 12 bucks, 6 percent Shopify 12 bucks. That's two percent to the downside. It's Google 63 bucks, two and three tenths percent. You've got Amazon off 37, one and a quarter percent. Tesla's off 35, that's down three and a half percent. IDEX Laboratories off 21, 3.7 percent. There, so let's begin our day by taking a look at the equity future contracts out here. We start with the ES mini upper left hand side. What do we know? We know we've got a TD9 count top, prices below its oscillator and change line says that price could be targeting the breakout level of 37, 2050. Of course, that's not going to happen until the weekly were to break its breakout level, then that would be at 41.25. 675. Price is below its green oscillator and change line. As long as it remains below that, that says a further retracement may take place. If we take a look at the daily time frame, TD9 count top. Today is going to become bar number seven of a TD9 count. That says a top or top, a bottom could form between tomorrow and Thursday. That would be a TD9 count bottom that we'd be looking for. If you look at the uh, play by play, and start with a 30-minute chart, we'll see a TD9 count bottom that is formed out there. That says that the key low to be looking at is priced at, this is the threshold level, 44.25. There's a close below that. You should expect to anticipate lower price. Right now, the bounce has taken price right up to its oscillator and change line at the 44.32 and just a bit, maybe 44.33. Let's see what is the exact number, 44.32.50. We're at 44.3250, or right thereabouts. So if price can close above this level, that would be at 130. Doesn't have to be 130. Could be two o'clock. But if it did close above this level, the oscillator and change line that is, then you would expect or anticipate a move back to the 44.52, 44.55 level. The 60-minute chart, no bottom pattern. 120-minute chart, no bottom pattern. 240, no bottom pattern. 300, no bottom pattern. So it's all going to be about the ES. And again, if the lows, not the low of the day. The low of that TD9 count pattern gets taken out, and certainly the low of the day, too, but the low of that TD9 count pattern would be sufficient. If that gets taken out, that suggests lower price, and that's really what the other intraday charts are communicating to you and I at the moment. That's what's going on with the ES. Let's move from the ES to the EQ, and let's look at all four. If we get that done within the next four minutes, of course, 
most people could. The question is, does Stevie's blabbering allow us to get there? Well, on a monthly basis, you've got a TD9 count top. Again, price below its offset and change line, much like the ES mini, so price could target 12,207. That's not going to come to fruition unless there's two consecutive closes below 13,426. Now, on a weekly basis, the offset and change line just changed colors last week. That's a really a bearish text, test and says that we should head lower. Well, if we look at the daily time frame, what we're going to see is prices below the bottom of that daily profile suggest to run towards or to 13.417. But today is bar number seven in its TD9 count counting system. That says there could be a bottom that forms between Tuesday and Thursday inside the NQs. Back to the 30-minute chart. What do we have out here? A roads momentum indicator bottom. Price is above the center of its profile at 14.099. If price closes above 14.099, the NQ says I want to go target 14.197 to 14.212. If price closes above 14.212, then you're looking at a rally to 14.356. You don't have a bottom signal on the 60-minute. You do have a TD9 count on the 120, and that says if price can close above 14,150, then you're up to the 14,281 or 14,382 level. The 240-minute chart has what? What does it have? Wave number seven is in place and bar number eight of a TD9 count. And the five-hour chart, no uh, such uh, bottoming signal that is out there as we speak right now. Let's move from the NQs and go over to the Dow equity future contract. As we take a look at the Dow, it would have to spike. Well, first, let's start with the monthly time frame. Roads momentum indicator top. Prices held support, 33,157. That's a weekly TD9 count breakout area. If price were to close below that, we'd be looking at a run lower. That run lower on a weekly basis would say about 29,522. That is not the call we're making. If we take a look at the daily time frame chart, today is going to become, well, depends. Today may become bar number eight it just depends upon the close out there but even if it does become bar number eight between tuesday and wednesday price has to spike the low from two days ago that means inside the dow equity future contract you would need to see a spike below 34 or 093 in order for a td9 count pattern to form the 30 minute time frame chart out here no bottoming signal uh, nothing on the 60 minute nothing on the 120 nothing on the 240 and nothing on the five hour time frame chart no unlike the other charts the es and the nq that is here we just have retracements for the most part that are going on um inside it but again no bottom pattern as we speak on this pullback inside the uh, dow for the last minute let's go take a look at the russell 2000 as we take a look at the Russell 2000, it has a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. Price could be targeting 1373. That's not going to happen unless price gets below 1811. That's a TD9 count breakout area for the weekly time frame. We're going to be in bar number six today. That says if there's going to be a TD9 count bottom, that's not going to place, take place in be until between Wednesday and Friday of this week. 30-minute time frame chart out there. What do we have? Well, we still have a TD9 count bottom that is still in play. I believe that's the case. Price just needs to close above, continue to close above 1975.40. What do we have in that last bar? Just curious. 1975.80. So its TD9 count bottom is still in place out here. But price would need to close above that red oscillator and change line in 1981 to suggest move to 1985. And if you get above that, then you're looking at 2005 as the price target. So that's what's going on with the four equity futures contracts. We come back from this break. We'll start answering questions. Looks like we only have one in the barn right now, and that's from David H. who wants to look at LRCX. So, folks, I'd love to hear from you. 877-927-6648 or steve at tfnn.com. Be right back. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. 
Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Let's go to our first question out here. This one from David H. David uh, writes in, says, hey, Steve, do the charts suggest that LRCX, that is LAM Research, will take out the lows of March 14th of 466.06 uh, in the next few days? You've got 475 puts. Well, let's take a look at so what we're taking a look at here, David. Uh, today's price action, you've got volume of about 913,000 shares as of 118. That's going against a swing point low that had volume of 1.6 million shares, 1.587 to be exact. So it looks to me, I don't know what the volume is going to look like at the end of the day, but it looks to me like you're coming in here light, but you're still inside that swing point. So, you know, you got to watch to see how that low gets tested. will get taken out. If you were coming down with volume, we would say odds would favor that as one possibility. But right now, it looks like the volume might be weak. Maybe that changes at day's end. And you'll certainly want to take a look at it tomorrow as well. And you're watching that 466.06 level. If you test it and reject it on less than 1.5 million shares, then you may just have a consolidation going on inside of Lamb Research, which would take us from where it's about trading now up into the 570-ish type area out there. Uh, you do see that on a weekly basis, Lamb Research is back to a rising trend line. On a monthly basis, it doesn't look good because price is below the bottom of its monthly profile. Now let's go switch over to the white background charts out here. And again, as we start with the monthly time frame, or momentarily we will, you'll see that price is again, it's got a rose momentum indicator top, price below the bottom of that profile. That would suggest it wants to make a move to 267.10. You're looking for, of course, uh, 475. Um, I'm not saying it's getting to 267.10. If price closed below 473.32, that would improve those odds, or at least move back to 332.61. So this is the key level of support that is testing right now on a weekly basis. It's breakout area. On a daily time frame, today is bar number nine of a TD9 count. The last low that came out here, and that's the benchmark you and I were both looking at, March 14th, was the bar following bar number nine. When this made a top 
on March 29th. It was with the bar following bar number nine. So, is the third time the charm, David? Both you and I, we don't know the answer to that, but it very well could be. What we do know is that traders, for reasons unbeknownst to you and I, do respect the TD9s out here. So your question was, do I think it's going to bust through 466? Knowing that right now today you're coming back on light volume and that you are in bar number nine, it looks more to me like tomorrow is a buying opportunity than it is a selling opportunity or at least time to close out your position or consider closing out your position but you really need to see how tomorrow trades again back at support on a weekly monthly didn't look all that good when we take a look at the td9 counts here going on in lamb research there's something that you need to at least consider out there now as i look to so when we do get a bottom signal and certainly bar number nine could be or should be a bottom signal we look to those intraday time frames for bottom patterns we don't have anything on a 15 minute. We do not have anything on a uh, 30 minute. We do, we could have a TD9 count bottom that forms on the 65 minute chart. We could, no, we don't have anything on the 130. Price pulling back to support the breakout level on the 195 or 475.09. So we're not getting, David, the, the signals here to suggest that you jettison your position right now. But what I would say is at this stage here for LAM Research, especially knowing that you're coming in that swing point with light volume with a TD9 count pattern, you may consider flipping your position. But what I would also do is see how the index is doing, not just the one instrument, uh, but I would see how the indices is doing. So, David, I hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for writing in. Gerardo V writes in, please run your process for KRE. You want to start a long position. So let's do the same thing here. Now, it's going to take a moment for KRE to... Um, to populate but while that's going on this is a banking etf out here and uh, let me get that going on my black background charts gerardo writes in please run your process for care i want to start a long position okay we already covered that that's jerry or gerardo and so we've got kre so you have the potential so you're going to wait here and see what happens on a daily time frame we're going to go immediately to the daily chart and what we know is that you could get a td9 count bottom now we're going to check out a couple of different things no, we're not. So price did close below the, uh, I was looking at that January 20th, so December 20th, 2021 low, that hammer candle, and price is below that level. That level is 65.46. We're at 65.40 right now. In order to get a TD9 count bottom, you need to see price spike below this bar number seven. That low out here is 64.49. It must do that today, which doesn't seem likely, or tomorrow. If that does not unfold, then what you don't have is a TD9 count bottom to suggest taking a long position. But as I look to other bottoms out here, I don't really see any pattern per se at this stage. So what you really want to see in order, Jerry, in order to take a long position here is you want to see this kind of get crushed tomorrow, which is a possibility. Now, that's just the daily time frame. Let's go take a look at the other time frame, see what their signals suggest to you and I. So I don't have a good call. I don't have a reason to call a significant top on a monthly basis, but price is consolidating with inside its monthly profile. And that says you could see, well, the, actually, there's a new monthly profile that formed out here. The key level of support is at 64.47. Let's keep an eye on that. On the weekly time frame chart, Roads Momentum Indicator top price below its breakout level of 66.49 suggests that price could pull back to 49.68. We covered the daily. Nothing to help us on the 195. TD9 count bottom on the 130. That says you want to watch the low here. If you see price trading below 64.51, closing below that. Not trading below, closing below 64.51. That suggests lower price. Nothing on the 65-minute chart. <clears throat> TD9 count on the 30-minute chart. <clears throat> price would need to close above 66.58 from a 30 minute time frame to suggest there might be something into this uh, trying to move up to 66.97 but that's really not what you want to see to take your long position because you'd really like to see a daily bottom signal out here so I don't see anything else. I think what you do, uh, Gerardo, is uh, you take a watch, uh, take a look at this tomorrow. See if it spikes below that low. If it does, right back to me. If it doesn't, then we don't have any change to our analysis at this stage here, and it will suggest that maybe the bottom is not in.
And that's really what the weekly chart is signaling to you and I. But you'd sure like to see that spike to get that TD9 count. So, Jerry, thanks so much for writing in. I hope that helps you out. Let's go to our next question. Okay, I see there's a few that have come in. So that's great. Thank you. Uh, Vicky writes in. I, I probably have to start picking things up just a tad here. Well, not well, we're, we're only we're not even half the hour. So P, let's, let's just keep going. Now we have PRK is uh, her request out there. Well, I was assuming that this is Vicky. It may just be Vic. So my apology about that. So as we take a look at this, uh, just looking at buying PRK is the request out there. So we want to be able to find some type of bottom or maybe there's a bottom that's already formed. Why isn't that thing? Okay. And uh, so well, that's, we're bottom fishing, that's for sure, because uh, I can see this thing has really moved lower uh, over the last several days out here. The question is, what pattern shows up, if any, on the daily time frame? Well, it turns out that Friday was bar number eight of a TD9 count. So back to the monthly time frame. You've got a TD9 count, top that's in place, price below the bottom of its uh, monthly profile. That suggests we could see lower price. That next lower price here would be 113.46. That's coming from the weekly chart breakout level. TD9, a Rhodes Minton indicator and TD9 count top for the weekly. But on the daily time frame here, you could be getting towards a bottom. That means a bottom should have formed or could form between Friday and tomorrow, because you can still have a spike lower and still maintain the TD9 count. Last major high out here, that was a TD9 count high. Maybe this is gonna be the next major low, TD9 count low for PRK, Park National Corp. We'll be right back. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. Let's uh, finish off PRK for Vic. So, Vic, you know, one of the things I noticed out here during the break is uh, this is a very thinly traded stock. As an example, 10,000 shares traded today. Looks like the average is around the 25, 30,000 type range out there. So, you know, I caution you against, uh, I don't know what this company does, Park National Corp., but uh, you're, you're getting in yourself into a potential illiquid stock. More importantly, though, with regard to trying to find a bottom, yeah, Friday was bar number eight. Today will become bar number nine. But as we look at those intraday time frame charts, no bottom signals here. So that says if there is going to be a bottom that forms, maybe that takes place tomorrow. Um, maybe it takes place tomorrow. Uh, when you, although you're going to have a confirmed TD9 count bottom out here, price should at least make a move up to the 126.52-ish area. That's its oscillator and change line. But I don't see the reasons to, for me to suggest that you enter a position here based upon our multi-time frame charts. So I hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for writing in, and we look forward to uh, speaking to you again. Next question is coming in from uh, Michael P. And Michael wants to take a look at one of the Kathy Woods uh, ETFs out there, ARKK. And uh, we're going to let this get populated. ARKK is the ETF for innovation, trading out at uh, 6055 right now, which is below the bottom of its daily profile. The bottom of its daily profile out here is at the uh, 6072 level. I'm reading this off of my other charts here while uh, we get uh, ARKK to load up on the white background charts. Uh, price is consolidating with inside its weekly profile. That range out there of support is 54.49, and 78.25 becomes the resistance level. And you're below the uh, monthly, or you're below the monthly bottom of its profile. So you'll see that here as these charts now come to life on the weekly time frame. What did we have out there? We had a TD9 count bottom that formed. So you've got a valid TD9 count bottom. That remains in effect unless price closes below that low. And the low of that pattern was, is 55.33. On a daily time frame, Michael, you're at bar number six. You're, as we mentioned, I mentioned, you're below the bottom of that profile. Your breakout area is 55.71. So bar number six, that says between Wednesday and Friday would be the more likely day for ARKK to show a bottom. That could be, it's not a guarantee, but it could be a TD9 count bottom out there. There was a TD9 count top that identified the high. So let's hope that it's a TD9 count bottom that forms. And, you know, that price area that you'd be looking for is somewhere around the 55.71-ish range. Now, the 195-minute chart says, not sure what you guys are talking about. I just formed a TD9 count bottom pattern. Which it's, oscillator, uh, it's oscillator and change line change colors. So what price should do is make its way up to the 6250 level. You'll see 6313 is oscillator and change line, but that was a bull structured 195 minute profile. And if it's just a counter trend move, then price would find resistance at about 6250. No bottom pattern on the 130. Uh, Rhodes momentum indicator bottom on the 65. This suggests move to 6144 at a minimum. Um, 6209 is the message from uh, the 30 minute chart out there, but is that a bottom? Not necessarily. So I'd, I'd, I'd prefer that uh, if it's me, I'd prefer to wait until, you know, Wednesday to see what kind of pattern might form out there. So I do hope that helps you out, Mike. Thanks so much for writing in. We've got a caller on the line. It is Brent in Martinez, California. Brent, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? How was your weekend? Oh, it's going great, Steve. I had a real nice weekend and my wife was off you know for a spring break and so we went to a place called um calaveras big trees it's kind of okay. up by angels camp where they used to do the you know the frog jumping sure I don't know if you saw you know that you know i'm talking about i do but uh yeah some really cool you know these giant sequoia yeah. trees that are just you have to be there looking at them to appreciate no it but these things are just massive and and uh, they just stand out from the rest of the trees in the forest. There's plenty of other trees like yeah. Lodge Pole Pine and just a lot of other trees. But these ones just really stand out as being something different and, you know, unique. Yeah, one of the wonders of the world, I think. Um, and you're right. You, you've got to be there. You know, it's a, it's a sight to most certainly behold out there. So I was gl glad that you had a great weekend. That's a wonderful thing. And uh, now that we're back to trading, your uh, your eye is on Overstock.com. OSTK is the uh, ticker symbol, folks. Uh, tell the people, uh, tell the uh, listeners what it is you're doing and how I could best help you. Well, we had talked about this previous, and uh, we're looking at, you know, that potentially going down and filling that gap, which it did. 
And I know there was an AV equal CD that would have taken it out a bit lower, but uh, today I think, if I'm correct, is bar nine on the daily. And uh, just it did go down and close the gap and, and uh, did it with lighter volume. I just wonder what levels, you know, if it, if it did kind of get to a point down there that as far as one year, you know, maybe TAS levels or something other than just that gap that would make sense. So that candle session that uh, Brent is referring to, and that is the one from uh, the trading day of February 22nd. In essence, that's the swing point. That had volume of about 4.2 million shares, and it was filling that gap. It was doing it with 1.5 million, uh, 1.2 million. So certainly moving into that swing point with lighter volume and a close above, which it's been doing, a close above 40.13 is a complete rejection of that swing point on lighter volume. Now, what we can see here, Brent, is that, yes, today may form bar number nine, but it's not the low of the pattern, nor was bar number eight. So that suggests if it's a TD nine count bottom you're looking for, you need to see a move below the bar from two days ago. That price level is at 3905. So 3904 or anything below that would then at least trigger a nine count. And that needs to occur in order for that nine count pattern to unfold needs to occur by Wednesday out here. Today will be, oh, tomorrow, my apology. Today's bar number nine. Tomorrow would be the last bar in that calculation. Uh, price is back inside or staying inside its bullish structured profile so the bottom of that bullish structured profile is at 40 uh, forty dollars and forty three cents so know that there's some strong buyers there that are trying to hold that level of support the key area to overcome though is going to be that center which is also where the red oscillator and change line is brent which is forty two eighty one so you'd really need to see a close above that to then say okay at least we have a consolidation at a minimum that would take us to the top of the profile in the fifty four seventy to fifty six seventy six type area um any question about the daily the white background daily chart that we're looking at no, that was good. I appreciate you kind of going over the level that it needed to, you know, go below to, to make it really an official, you know, sure. TD9 count. So the weekly on overstock still has that nice Rogemintum indicator bottom. And that was confirmed on February 25th when it generated a nice big bullish engulfing candle. It also has a TD9 count bottom. Now, two two bottoms don't make it stronger than one bottom, at least not that I've been able to find so far. But we can see here, Brent, that on a weekly basis, that red oscillator and change line has really been a significant level of resistance. That current price out here is at 44.23. Now, you might not want to wait for price to get above that, but it is real clear that anything you do get into, should you take an entry into this position, you know that the weekly oscillator and change line is really going to be a key level for you to continue to observe. As we look at the intraday time frame charts out here, so example, I'll start with the 195. I don't really have a bottom signal per se. Maybe there's an A to B equal CD pattern, uh, in, in which case there would be a bottom that would have been confirmed at 4 o'clock on Friday. Don't really see a bottom signal here on the 130, nor I do see a road momentum indicator bottom on this 65-minute chart. My price would need to close about 44.19 to suggest a bottom. I hear the uh, music in the background, Brent. Uh, if, you, you're more than welcome to hold on, and we can finish taking a look at this or anything else that you'd like. So please, please do so. And if, if you're hanging up, then have a wonderful day. But I'll assume we're going to come back and speak with Brent in Martinez, California. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. 
PaperWhite's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We're taking a look at the overstock.com, uh, OSTK is the ticker symbol. We're Brent in Martinez, California. Uh, Brent, during the break out there, you know, I went back through the charts, take a look at them. And uh, the one thing that is a bit concerning, and I've switched over to the black background charts for you, is the weekly time frame. So I did mention, so th there's there's both good news, bad news. The good news on the weekly time frame is that it confirmed a nice road's momentum indicator bottom. That was on this big bullish engulfing candle with volume off of the bottom um, from February 21st. I mean, it was big volume. There was 58 million shares. But price, you know, knowing that we've got these daily or these profile levels and it was a bullish structured profile. I, I was surprised, I guess, when I look at the chart to see that price closed below the bottom of that bullish structured profile last week. And that level was 41.53. We don't know where it'll close this week. If it uh, gets back above that level, closes back above it, then a one you know one week signal, one bar signal is not enough. But if it does close below it, then that at least suggests uh, going back and testing the low at a minimum. And and so that might be the better entry price uh, for you because you know you get in at those lows, and if it uh, starts trading below that, you know you probably jettison the position. But that's that's something that I looked at from a profile standpoint that stood out at me. What say you? What additional questions or information uh, can I provide to you? No, that's great, Steve. I appreciate that. I I've been trying to just be patient with this, and I'll continue to do that. And. You give me all kinds of numbers that that are relevant to be watching, and and uh, okay, yeah, you know, they're all going to be, you know, have uh, you know things that'll be necessary for me to see that you know, either go above or if it if it fails, then that's you know the other direction to be watching. So, um, you know, I just appreciate it so much. You have yourself Perfect. a wonderful day. Have a great week, and I'm sure I'll have a chance to talk to you soon. That sounds great. We'd love to. We'd love to uh, hear from you. That was Brent in Martinez, California. Uh, we've got a request inside the Tigers Den to look at the 30-year Treasury. So I'm going to go ahead and get that up on my uh, white background charts. I believe we're on the black ground, black background charts right now. So I'm going to switch over and take a look at the. Uh, and the request was specifically to look at the eight panel charts, which we'll do, but I've got to let that populate. So while that's populated, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the 30 year treasury. And really it's the longer term or the bigger picture charts here that are more helpful. So here's what we know about the 30 year treasury. Then I've got my synthetic version of the contract up so that we can take a look at profile levels for longer periods of time. For example, the bottom right is the quarterly timeframe. 
The quarterly time frame shows a bearish structured profile that price was in, and now price is very likely going to go target the bottom of that profile at 138.22. We're at 142.03 right now, so that's another four points or so to the downside. That 132, uh, 138.22 level, if that area fails, there's a monthly A to B equals CD to the downside that would get us into the 131.22 level. And both those figures are not even out of the question because we take a look at the daily and we take a look at the weekly time frames. We can see that price is below the bottom of their profiles as well. So the only profile level of support for a daily, weekly, monthly or quarterly is at that 138.22 level. So very likely that is where price is uh, headed to. Now I'm trying to delay that because I'm waiting for my other charts here to populate. And uh, we'll switch over to them right now. It's still waiting for the weekly time frame, but uh, we've got enough data here that we can take a look at it. So right now, our theory is, our thought process is 138.22 is where the 30-year is headed to. When we look at the monthly time frame out here, the monthly time frame says, well, hold on a second. I might have breakout support at 139.14. So that's the next level of support to uh, look at. That comes from the monthly time frame. I can't open that chart or anything. Everything's kind of frozen while it waits on this weekly chart here to populate. That's a bummer. Uh, nonetheless, if we look at the daily time frame out there, they're perfect. So if we look at the daily time frame, we're only in bar number five of a TD9 count, so we're not seeing any kind of a bottom signal here. There was a road's momentum indicator signal that triggered. That got negated three days ago. And the intraday charts out here, what do we see? I don't see much. On a five-hour chart, I see a, a TD9 count bottom, and if price closes below 142.07, or 142.04 right now, that pattern will get negated. Now, this bar that's trading here, this five-hour bar, this completes in 13 minutes. So if price again closes below that low, that low again on the 30-year treasury is 142.07, that would, for me, just be another confirming message that price wants to continue to head lower out there. So, John, there's your eight-panel set of charts. I don't really see anything else here that makes sense for me to uh, take a look at. And everything is pointing to lower price. The next lower price area is a 139.14. So hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for writing in. And uh, let's go to our next uh, request out here. Let me see if we do have another request. Uh, we took care of ARC. That was from Michael P. This uh, next request comes in from, uh, let me see, how many more do we have? We've got two. So uh, let me do this here. Because uh, uh, Susanna from Canada has written in. She wants to take a look at MARA. M-A-R-A is the uh, ticker symbol. So we're going to get back to our eight-panel set of charts there to help us identify tops and bottoms and uh, get that symbol typed in, M-A-R-A. -A. Give me just a moment to do that. It takes less than a minute to do that, but it might seem like a lot of uh, time uh, because, you know, I've got to fill that time up. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to go to my black background screens, M-A-R-A, -A, and just simply narrate what they're communicating to us. That's Marathon Digital, by the way, which is pulling back and on a daily basis is testing a rising trend line. So a potential area of support. And while it's, try while it's testing a rising trend line on the daily time frame, it's doing the same on the weekly, and the weekly is also testing the bottom of its weekly profile, 2157. Price is trading below the bottom of its monthly profile, and that's at the 2484. Price is printing out at 2209. So as the white charts come to life, I hope they come to life. What's the deal out there? There we go. As they come to life, your question is, would you please do your analysis, usual analysis on Bitcoin and Mara? You're in Mara at 23 bucks, deciding what to do to add your position or what have you. Well, you've got bar number nine. So... You're in a 23 bucks. It's trading at 22.06. Um, you've got bar number nine. That says that uh, today, that says, and that's pulling into a uh, prior swing point for March the 15th. Now, the swing point on March the 15th that it's trading into, as an example, has volume of 8.7 million. You're 4.7 today. But a rejection would require a close above 22.40. Uh, I take that above 22.47. You don't have that as we speak right now. But price is pulling back, you know, into a level of support. It's bar number nine that's forming. So what we would want to see here on Mara, Suzanne, Susanna, some kind of bottom signals on the intraday charts. Well, the 195 has got a TD9 count bottom as well. And that's going to complete by 2 p.m. We don't have anything on the 130 other than price pulling back to a breakout level of support. We don't have a bottom signal yet on the 65-minute chart. 
We don't have one. We do have a 30-minute uh, roads momentum indicator bottom. But price would need to close above 2302, really we'll call it 2337, to say that you've got a real bottom and nothing on the 15-minute time frame chart. So here's what I'm going to suggest based upon the lack of confirmed bottoms on the short-term time frames is to wait till tomorrow and see uh, see how that trades because it could be a lower low that forms. But uh, if you're looking for reasons to uh, add your position, it would be, in essence, uh, because of the daily TD9 count, whether it's today's low or if there's a lower low tomorrow, if you get a close below those, then your decision as far as what to do would be pretty simple. It would be to head south, would be to jettison that position and to protect your capital. So you've got the pattern that you need. The suggestion, because of the short-term time frame charts, is to wait till tomorrow. Oh, Susanna, I hope that helps you out. And thanks so much for writing in to me. We'll be right back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at Bitcoin, the April contract that is still the active contract here. This is also for Susanna. So, Susanna, back on February 24th, uh, it formed a nice little TD9 count bottom. When it topped, it was on a uh, nine count from March the 28th. You're now in bar number seven. Uh, this suggests that a uh, you know if the third time is also a charm here for Bitcoin. You should see a bottom form between tomorrow and Thursday of this week. 
And ideally, that'll take place, and that'll form above 38,920, the breakout level out there. So it looks like Bitcoin is getting ready to form a bottom. I can't make that. Um, I can't. I can't commit to that just yet because we're only in bar number seven. You know, I need bar number nine to complete. At least get to bar number eight. The low's got to take place in bar number eight. So what that tells you is that if a TD9 count is going to form, you're still going to see lower lows beyond the low of the day out here in order for that to take place. And those lows would have to be pierced, or that low would have to be pierced between tomorrow and. And Thursday. So hope that helps you out for both Bitcoin and for, um, I apologize, the other uh, symbol that we uh, took a look at uh, for you. Last question here is from Eddie. And Eddie writes in, he says, any indication, any indication that, indication that the global flow of capital patterns into the U.S. are out of it may or may not rescue the markets from inflation hysteria? Well, can you look at NVIDIA, which is being taken to the woodshed on a downgrade? Well, let's go take a look at uh, that one, because that I can answer here in the next 30 seconds or so. And we'll do that by going over to our eight-panel set of charts. Let me get those up on the screen for you, and then we'll go take a look at NVIDIA, which, by the way, today is going to be bar number nine of a TD9 count. So it might be taken out to the woodshed. I'm just going to open up the daily time frame chart up here, and you'll see bar number nine. Uh, so, and that's moving back into a prior swing point out there. Uh, real quickly, let me see if I can get the uh, volume on uh, on that look here, NVIDIA, NVDA. So the volume as it's coming into that prior swing point out here, um, volume, it was 55 million. You're at 41 million today. So it's kind of, so it looks like maybe tomorrow, Eddie, might be the day we see a bottom inside of NVIDIA for its daily time frame. Folks, have a magnificent Monday. I'll see you tomorrow on Terrific Tuesday.